Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. So it is finally time to do a proper bookshelf tour of my new and improved bookshelf that I built together with my father a couple of months ago. It is totally more my style, my vibe, the things and the colors that I love. And I'm so excited to show you all the books or an overview of the books that are on my shelf. But before we continue, there are two new books that I need to add to my shelf because this video is kindly sponsored by book of the month i love that new box by the way it says warning this box may elicit excitement absolutely so if you don't know book of the month they are an amazing us-based subscription service for readers and every single month that team goes through dozens of new releases they pick their most favorite ones so you don't have to do the research on all the new releases and you can choose one or more of these books that will be shipped right to your doorstep all the books are beautiful hardcovers so i thought i would show you two of the selections for march the first one is called Wayward, written by Amelia Hart. I am a wayward and wild inside. And it says that this book is weaving together the stories of three extraordinary women across five centuries. And the second one that I picked out is called Ruthless, written by Crystal Zara Apia. And again, loving this cover. It says a provocative debut novel about a marriage in crisis that asks, can you ever be rooted in a home that's on the brink of collapse? So these are two of the March selections for Book of the Month. And if you want to get your first hardcover new release for only $9.99, you can use the code BRIT. Book of the Month is also completely risk-free, so if you want to skip a month, that is absolutely no problem. You will not be charged, and you can just start whenever you want again. But do keep in mind that Book of the Month currently only ships to the US and Canada, but the majority of you guys who are watching are from there, so many of you can use my code to get your first one for $9.99. Again, thanks so much for working with me on this video, but now let's put these books on my shelf and then I can do a proper bookshelf tour. Okay, so these books are like quite big. These are really, really big hardcovers and most of my shelves are quite small. So the shelves behind me are one of the only ones that these will actually fit. But luckily, I have still got enough room to put them right here. Okay, now it's time to actually do a bookshelf tour. So I thought I would first get behind the camera to show you an overview of my bookshelf. So this is the bottom part with a chair and then it goes all the way to the top of my living room. So first of all, the chair, I will try to link it down below if they still got it. It's from a Dutch store called Lanebucker and it's a really nice chair. It's not the most comfortable chair. It just looks really cool. And I love the color of like the dark green and the brown. And of course I just have some pillows in there as well. And then that little table is a vintage one that I wanted as a little coffee table to put my book on or like the books I'm currently reading are on there right now, as well as just a cup of tea if I feel like sitting in my reading chair, which to be honest, I don't really do that often because my sofa is more comfortable. These are loose shelves. There are these things that I drill into the wall where you can click in these shelf holders, as you can see over there. And then you can just put the shelves on there. You can choose, you know, whichever height you want between the shelves, which is really nice. So I could really, you know, um, create the type of shelves and the height that I want. So yeah, this is a little overview, but now let's get a closer look at the books. And actually I want to start at my favorite shelves, which are kind of these in the middle. So I'm just gonna start in the middle, why not? Hello, welcome to my nonfiction shelf. This one goes all the way to the back and this is all nonfiction because nonfiction is one of my favorite genres. I love learning about new things and about, you know, just things that I don't know anything of. Um, hence why non-fiction books are the perfect thing for that. So if we look over here, I have all of my science, psychology, um, kind of history books as well. For example, things about Einstein or the history of, let me see, <laughs> nearly everything. It's just basically all about the universe and humankind. A bit further on my non-fiction shelf are more just books about humans and history, which are just one of the most interesting books out there. Then I've got a few books about the Titanic, which is also one of these historical things that I'm really interested in. This one is a really cool one. Um, look at this cover. It shows an entire kind of outline. You know, you can kind of see the inside, which is super, super interesting. Then further down this side, we have books about people. For example, memoirs, but also things like this, which is the Radium Girls. This is all about women who used to work in radium factories, which was incredibly poisonous to work there um, and dangerous. Don't throw this plant off. If you've seen my bookshelf reorganization video, you will have seen that I accidentally pulled off this plant off my shelf. 
was not my brightest moment. And then the last part of this shelf is basically my favorite um, type of books. These are all my Patti Smith books, whom I love, one of my favorite writers, um, Just Kids, this beautiful illustrated edition, as well as just my red edition, one of my favorite books ever. <laughs> and more nonfiction memoirs written by these really awesome feminists from decades ago, like Joan Didion, Eve Babbitts, etc. Um, so these all over here. This one is also a really amazing one. The Years by Ennio No, a really interesting take on writing a memoir because it's more about a memoir of an entire generation instead of just her life. Then we have some by Simone de Beauvoir, Mary Beard, and then over here we have some just more books about life, memoirs by Dolly Elton, whom I also freaking love, some books about racism, and just some more non-fiction books. Basically just lots of different types of topics. It's just an incredible big collection of different types of non-fiction books. This was a long intro about non-fiction books. <laughs> But yeah, it's my favorite shelf or one of my favorite shelves. Okay, let's go down like two shelves because this entire area are all of my classics. As you can see, I'm loving these Penguin Modern Classics editions, the beautiful colored ones, you know, bluish green ones. So I want all of those basically. <laughs> then we just have lots of different classics. This is a really cool book. This used to be an actual book. And if I do this, let's see if you can see, a little light goes on. <laughs> It was a gift. Oh my god, and there is a little gnome. So that one is chilling on my bookshelf. I'm definitely not much of a classics reader. Like I do have quite a few classics, that doesn't mean I have read them all. And most of them are just the very well-known classics. Down here I have a really cool like two Shakespeare books that belong to my grandfather. And these are beautiful and amazing and they're just there for show. Um, I also love to have little trinkets on my bookshelf, as you can see. These are still two roses that were in um, one of the bouquets at my grandfather's funeral. And this is like 10 years old and these are all dried. So he's just here with me um, on all of his books because he loved to read. And I've got many of his books now. So that's always a beautiful memory of him, you know, reading all of these books and me still having lots of these books. So yeah, more classics. Then an exciting thing, let's get a little bit closer. Hello. <laughs> this is my Oscar Wilde collection. He is one of my favorite writers. As you can see, this is a very awkward angle. This is one of my most amazing Oscar Wilde books. Look how cool this looks. It is gold. The wit of Oscar Wilde is gorgeous. I found it somewhere secondhand. Yay, best secondhand book find ever. That part, as you can see, wall of the classics. And then this part is just literary fiction, contemporary fiction, a bit of a mess, honestly. I try to kind of organize all my books on genre, but sometimes it's not really working that well, which is fine, but that way it's a bit of a mess. We have like books about unhinged female characters, um, some more unhinged female characters that are very, very popular right now. <laughs> And then we have some Sally Rooney, some more fiction, some historical fiction over here. Let me move you through here. This is all historical fiction. Um, so as you can see, just lots of fiction. Down here, it's basically the same. Lots of different fiction. Here I have some Japanese fiction here as well. I need to organize that better because it's not all organized and like still not set next to each other. Then we have some, oh, this is also historical fiction. <laughs> Then we have my Hanya Yonigahara books, um, some more historical fiction. <laughs> and here I have got some Dark Academia books and some more. What type of book is this? I honestly don't even know the genre of this book. Happy Hour. If anyone knows the genre, let me know so I can put it in the right spot. I have now realized that my bookshelf is not very well organized. It's just a gigantic mess. And sometimes I am still searching for a particular book on my bookshelf and I'm like, where are you? Which makes sense now. Okay, these three shelves are done. I'm gonna sit down now because this is my normal height, but <laughs> this is how I now have to stand, which is uncomfortable. Um, so we can talk about some books down here. Let's take a look at some of the books behind me. As you can see, there are a lot of the Book of the Month books on here because they are really high and sometimes they don't fit on the actual shelf that they're supposed to be on when it comes to genres, but that is fine. So these are all just like um, right behind me. Then I have this one, which is also a really big one that did not fit on my normal, you know, genre shelf that it was supposed to be on. So again, it is chilling right here. 
Then next up we have all of my Taylor Jenkins Reid books, so kind of like the historical fiction that take place in, you know, the same um, universe. So of course Malibu Rising, Daisy Jones and the Six and Evelyn Hugo. Then we have some more kind of historical fiction 70s hippie-ish books with rock and roll music, um, Utopia Avenue and the people we keep. And then there is another historical fiction. So more book of the month books that are very high. This is another historical fiction that I haven't read yet, but again, it didn't fit. I just had too many books that do not fit on the shelves because I couldn't fit more shelves on my actual wall. So I had to have some smaller ones, you know, but that's fine. Um, so yeah, some more book of the month books. And then if we move through here, we have some thriller books, you know, like um, Night Film, which was really, really popular a couple of years ago. I have one Colleen Hoover book that I haven't read yet and honestly don't really know why I bought it, but who knows, maybe I'll read it one day. And then we have House of Leaves, which I'm super, super interested in reading. This one is so heavy, by the way. It looks so cool. I want to read it, but I'm a little bit intimidated. The Da Vinci Code, and then over here I have like some magical realism books, all the Night Circus and Aaron Morgenstern books. I wanted to put this one right here because the back cover is really beautiful and then I can see it, you know, from the side of my bookshelf. <laughs> That's the only reason I put these here because, you know, going from magical realism to some thrillers to some random genres doesn't really make any sense, but does my bookshelf make any sense? Not really. Okay, I'm gonna sit on the floor right now. By the way, these are fake candles. I'm not going to be burning down my house and bookshelf. Down here, we have some middle grade books and some young adult books, some contemporary young adult books, as well as some Dutch books. This is a very popular Dutch book, The Avond is Ongemak. I can't really remember the English name, but I haven't read it yet, unfortunately. Some more Dutch books over here. And then behind here, we have some poetry. And then down here, I have a little bit of romance, Babel, which definitely does not belong here. But again, it did not fit on my fantasy shelf. And then right here, we have some middle grade and a couple of young adult books. And here we have all the Heartstopper books. <laughs> Let's get closer. <laughs> Heartstopper. By the way, since I'm currently sitting next to my currently reading um, table, I thought I would show you the books I'm currently reading. The first one is called Whereabouts, written by Jhumpa Lahiri. This is a really beautiful story that follows an unnamed um, main character living her life, I think in a little town in Italy. It's a very simple story, but I love getting, you know, into her head and just finding out about her life. The next one is one that I'm just about to start. It's Boy Part by Eliza Clark, which my patrons voted for for me to read next. And then this one is also one that I haven't started yet, but that is my next read for my Patreon book club, which I'm so excited to read because this one has been on my shelf for a very long time. The Martian by Andy Way is one of my favorite books and people have told me that this one is even better. And then as you can see behind here, we have some comics and graphic novels. These are mostly Joker and Batman comics, which I really enjoy reading. And then behind the chair, there is still a little shelf which holds all of my Harry Potter books. There is still room for one more shelf down here, which I am going to get. Like I need to get a new shelf for that because as you can see, it just doesn't really properly fit. So I need to get the last shelf to put behind my shelf, um, chair, but I didn't calculate that correctly when assembling all the shelves that I kind of needed one more. Oops. Okay, so these were like the lower part of my bookshelf. I also have this really cute kind of mini shelf <laughs> next to my bookshelf. There is a big plant on here. I can't really remember what this plant is, um, but this is just, you know, a little basket that holds some bigger books that do absolutely do not fit on my shelf. For example, this really big book about the universe, about science fiction. This is a really big Titanic book, a book about fashion from what people used to wear. Uh, this is a book about my family history, another Titanic book, Sapiens, the graphic novel that I have yet to read, as well as a book about Greek myths. And then that I got for my birthday from someone, um, a viewer of mine called Around the World in 80 Plants. 
plants and flowers from different countries. Super, super interesting and so cool. So these are all these beautiful kind of coffee table books um, that are here in a little Prosecco bottle with some dried flowers. So yeah, just a cute little extra bookshelf for some bigger books. Okay, we have had nearly all the shelves. This is a non-fiction shelf. So we have two more shelves to go. They're really high. I'm actually wearing high heels right now and it's really high. It's like really close to my ceiling. So let's get a bit closer. Wow, this is a very beautiful angle. This is like really high up. But these two shelves are basically my fantasy and science fiction shelves. Everything is mixed up, but that's fine. We have some fantasy over here, probably with the orange tree. Then we have some um, science fiction, more science fiction, and then more fantasy, and then more fantasy. <laughs> Of course, the Lord of the Rings trilogy, the Poppy Wall trilogy, and then up here we have the Game of Thrones books. This is really beautiful. Let's see if I can grab it. This is a really beautiful illustrated edition of the Game of Thrones. Gorgeous. Damn, this angle is not good. Some YA fantasy as well, because everything is mixed up. The Martian, one of my favorite science fiction books, and then some more science fiction or oh, wait this is also science fiction i think yeah just science fiction science fiction fantasy science fiction everything is mixed up and then on the other side of my plant arthur we have um high fantasy very high up on my shelf the mistborn trilogy as well as some wire fantasies the shadow and bone trilogy some first books in series the cruel prince and the ship of magic by robin hobb wire fantasy and adult fantasy and then all of the Mortal Instruments and Cassandra Clare books, as well as up there as well, because they didn't fit anymore. What a surprise. <laughs> and then all the way, can you see? The Wrath and the Dawn duology. Oh my god, I used to be obsessed with that, you know, a couple of years ago when it was really popular and was just released on Booktube. It feels like I'm drowning in my shot. And then lastly, up here we have Six of Crows. Um, some more book of the month fantasy books that actually fit on here. Oh, maybe Babel will fit on here as well. Some The Hunger Games by Suzanne Collins, The Sight Trilogy by Neil Shusterman, and The Diviners by Libba Bray, which I've only ever read the first book of. I should definitely continue reading. What I've decided to do is just quickly glide the camera through all the shelves so you can have a closer look yourself if you want to you know see a specific book because it's really difficult showing you every single book and so yeah I'll just glide you through <laughs> all of my shelves with some lovely music behind it so enjoy I also have this little stack of books right next to my TV, um, which are the beautiful The Boy, The Moor, The Fox and The Horse, as well as the Dutch version of this, and then some decorative books, like this one, and these ones, and these ones right by my window, so there are just lots of books everywhere. Okay, I think that was it. This was a very chaotic bookshelf tour, but nevertheless, I really hope you liked it. And if you did, please do give it a thumbs up. And if you want to comment something, which you don't know what to comment, comment a candle emoji because of the fake candles. <laughs> and I don't really dare to put real candles close to my bookshelf. If you've also got any questions on the books that I mentioned or you want to know more about a specific book, don't hesitate to let me know in the comments and I can always just answer it right there. Thank you again so much for watching. I hope you're having a beautiful day and I will see you in my next video. Bye.